so friends today's topic is uh, integrating social media in uh, our education system so in my presentation i'll be talking about uh, what exactly is uh, social media what are the various types of uh, popular uh, social media which are being used by the uh, teachers in uh, education system and then the of course most important why social media why we are all uh, uh, talking about uh, this now why it is so important for all of us to integrate uh, in our education system and then i'll be briefly talking about what are the social media which we are uh, using in our daily life maybe it's facebook or youtube or twitter how we can use those medias uh, in our day-to-day um, uh, -day teaching so as to make it more effective and more uh, interactive with the uh, students. I think all of you agree with me. This is a very important uh, uh, topic that uh, we all have to uh, use those uh, potential opportunities which are available with us because of this uh, uh, changing scenario in the education. So first of all, let us talk about what exactly is social media. Would you all understand about it? What is social media? Any one of you? Oh, good morning, ma'am. Media good that morning, connects. Good morning, good morning, Doctor Vivek Sharma. Uh, ma'am, media that connects a society. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, media that connects this society. Okay. Anybody else would like to supplement? Yeah, it is uh, connecting the society. What else? No answer. OK, let's go ahead. Social media are computer tools that allows people not only to connect with each other, but also to create information to share or exchange information with each other, ideas, images, videos, and even more with each other through a particular network. So social media that are the social, that are internet sites where people interact with one another. They provide a place for people across the world to share information and engage in discussions. They can interact with each other. It's a real-time application uh, in many of the platforms. So social media is a communication tool that allows users to interact with and contribute the content online. So social media platforms like uh, Pinterest, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, I think, are being used by almost everyone. So it is not just only limited to posting vacation snaps online. It is an interactive computer mediated technology for sharing of various ideas, information, or career interest, or maybe other forms of expression through apparent communities and worldwide network. It has become a very powerful tool for the people uh, to market their products. So these social channels are all about collaborating, networking, sharing, and generating new knowledge and content, something which is of great value in the context of, especially in education. So social network tools offer students, as well as the institutions, with multiple opportunities to improve their teaching learning methods. Through these networks, you can incorporate <clears throat> Uh, social media plugins that enable sharing and interactions. Students can benefit from online tutorials and other resources uh, that are shared through social media networks and other learning management systems. So although social media has a large presence in the uh, field of news and uh, entertainment, but when used in the learning setting for educational purposes, it has the potential to facilitate communication, augmenting the students' experiences, and also improving the learning outcomes by way of uh, uh, extending the learning environment even beyond the classroom by providing a student-centric learning setting, by encouraging interaction and engagement amongst the students. 
facilitate the uh, flow of information uh, between the students, faculty, and I will say the whole campus uh, community. So anybody knows about what are the uh, various types of popular social media which are being used by the teachers in our uh, education system, in the, especially in the higher education, I think. Any one of you, you are familiar with the popular social media? Which yes, Priya ji, you want to say something? Ma'am, it's Google Meet and Zoom. Uh, Google? Google Meet app and Zoom app. Okay. Okay. What else? So there are a wide range of tools that are uh, uh, available that integrate the technology and social interaction and the content creation. Even in my presentation, I'll be confining to the most uh, popular ones, but there are a large number of uh, social media platforms which are available. So my main uh, purpose of this session is to make you aware about uh, all those social medias so that uh, you can see that uh, how much opportunity is available for uh, all the teachers to use that media in our uh, classroom. So friends, various types of uh, popular social medias, these includes the social networks, blogs, microblogs, wikis, social bookmarking, media sharing, and really simple syndication known as the RSS. Uh, I will uh, uh, brief you about uh, uh, these uh, terms. The social network is an online community that brings people with common interest, opinions, activities, and experiences together by sharing their news, photos, videos, and events. A social network is uh, essentially composed of a, a representation of you, each user of a profile, uh, his social links, as well as the variety of uh, additional services. So these online communities also provide uh, means for users to interact with each other over the internet, such as email and instant messaging. Some of the most popular social networking sites are Facebook, LinkedIn, MySpace, and there may be many more. The second type of media platform is the blogs. Blogs are web-based logs or web-based journals that enable users to post their thoughts, their ideas, their writings, and also their opinions for other people to view. Blogs are usually uh, written by one person about a particular topic and are usually updated on a regular basis with entries displayed in reverse chronological order. They can either be self-hosted or placed on a blogging network such as Blogger, WordPress, or Tumblr. And then the microblogs. Microblogs, as their name suggests, provide a similar function as the traditional blogs, but with a much stronger focus on being short or being quick. A microblogging website enable users to write short text messages and transmit them in real time to their contacts. Microblogging can therefore be seen as a cross between the blogging and the social networking. The most famous microblogging service is the Twitter. Then the another uh, important platform is the wikis. Wikis are the websites that are uh, developed uh, collaboratively by the community of users. They allow any user to add, to change, to correct, and also post information for others to see. The largest and the most popular wiki, I think all of you know, is the Wikipedia. A user contributed online encyclopedia, currently hosting millions of articles in over more than 200 languages. So once published, articles on Wikipedia are considered to be living content as they are always subject to change and amendment by the users. Then another important social media platform is the social bookmarking. 
social bookmarking websites also termed as the collaborative tagging systems give people the opportunity to tag their favorite links and share the results with other users usually organized by a topic bookmarks can be uh, saved privately shared with certain people or groups or also available to the public um, the examples are the delicious dig reddit uh, stumble upon just to name a few are the good examples of websites offering bookmarking services media sharing media sharing sites enable users to upload and share their multimedia content like photos videos and uh, audio on the web so people can view the files uploaded by others and wish them with the tags and share their thoughts through comments so example of such social media tools are youtube flickr itunes and also shutterfly last one is the rss short form is for the really simple syndication it is a common component of uh, a social media website rss uh, allows websites and blogs to uh, distribute their updated and dynamic content as feeds to different users so hence instead of visiting a given website regularly the user can subscribe for free to as many feeds of information as desired and then access and manage those feeds all at once by making use of an rss reader for example is the google reader so next coming to why social media why you think that uh, because uh, since years together i think uh, we all people are teaching our students so why uh, all of a sudden or maybe in the last uh, few years much emphasis on this social media to integrate social media in the education system why so ma'am because in the online there is a vast information and the latest latest or updated Not information yeah please okay to give the latest and the updated information to the students yes 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 ma'am group yeah ma'am anybody else yes ma'am see it is because uh, as you all know this 21st century has brought a radically different economy and society with profound implications for our education system the present education system must adapt to the key features like we are going through a very intense competition and the globalization i will say the globalization of the workforce now there are no boundaries students are moving outside the country so we have to prepare the students who are of world class who are of international standard we have to prepare them according to the changing needs of the industry because you all know that the skill set required by the industry today is not the same as it was required 10 or 20 years ago this is a competitive world and people cannot afford to ignore the competition the present era is called an information age as priya ma'am has said we have to provide them the latest and the updated information so no one at present can survive without information and always has to remain updated at all the times with the current knowledge so as to remain competitive in today's market another challenge is that uh, use of information and communication technologies ict revolution see recent years have witnessed an increased interest in using technology with the courses in higher education so new ict technologies have been created for academic use changing the way organizations and people create information engage themselves and share existing or uh, newly produced information through multi way communication through the computer or maybe through the mobile devices so new developments in the teaching and training new approaches for the delivery of uh, content we may be very knowledgeable enough may have published many papers written many books but even good academicians i tell you sometimes feel uncomfortable to teach online but teacher can't be helpless they are intellectual people they will have to be familiar 
with the online platforms and tools which are available for teaching and learning. Another challenge before us is the knowledge society, the knowledge explosion. I think there is ocean of knowledge available with all of us. So the kind of knowledge society which has emerged today is that it is now easier than ever to know or find out something about, I think, almost everything in the world through this connected media. Obsolescence of knowledge and need for lifelong learning. Because the technology changes very fast and there is an increased emphasis on R&D and innovations. One has to update and reskill oneself on continuous basis and to become a lifelong learner. Otherwise, we will become obsolete in the system. We have to develop the student as an independent learner to survive in the present day market. Because as a teacher, I think you will all agree with me, we cannot teach each and everything of in three or four years of a course, which will be required by the student in 30 or 40 years of career life. We will have to develop the habit of self-learning in the students. I think in the national uh, education policy 2020, if we have gone through, much emphasis has been laid on the holistic development of students by offering multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary education. This revamping of education system after the launch of NEP 2020 or uh, maybe the earlier situation which we faced COVID-19 pandemic and also the development of uh, new learning expectations for the students have necessitated the advanced pedagogical approaches to be used that will help the students to actively construct the knowledge through meaningful learning experiences. Now there is a paradigm shift in the teaching and learning also. If you uh, see, there is a paradigm shift in the content as well as in the delivery mechanism. There is a shift from the traditional teaching to the facilitation of learning. Now, no more teaching is the teacher-centered. It has to be the learner-centered approach. So on the part of learner, I think the changes we have seen now is the shift from the individual learning to the shared learning, the group-based learning, guided learning to the independent learning. There's no, we have to spoon feed the students. We'll have to prepare them as the independent learner, as I just talked about. Learning co-terminus with the degrees. Earlier, the only aim was to earn a degree, find a job and go out. But now I think uh, every skill I, uh, becomes obsolete after uh, uh, four or five years. I think in the field of computer, so maybe this uh, time span would be less also. We will have to prepare the student with the lifelong learning habits and actual endeavor. Earlier, the learner was as empty vessel, passive recipient of the knowledge, but now at present, they are the active participant in the teaching learning process. On the part of the teacher, now the focus is shifting from skill to competence. It is not that we the student has learned a skill, he or she should be competent enough to exhibit that skill. He or she is able to use that in the different uh, situation also, more application oriented uh, uh, teaching learning. Now the shift is from local community to the world society. Earlier we were preparing the uh, students as per the local needs of the industry. But now, as I said, we have to prepare the students who can uh, be accepted worldwide. Earlier important was the content, the what of knowledge, but now the more important is the process, the how of thinking. Earlier we were confined to only textbooks, textbook driven curriculum, but now we are in the information age. We are more, uh, uh, there is in the related to the information technology. Earlier teacher, used to be as a provider of the knowledge, but now teacher has to act as a mediator, as an information facilitator. So there is a, as I said, on the part of the teacher, earlier practice was that teacher comes to the class, writes on the 
uh, board and is over but now the content is available on the internet only explanation may be required but many times i think explanation is also there as the uh, we can see our um, for example is the nptel students have only queries so teacher has to prepare accordingly so today with the implementation of uh, learning outcome based curriculum teacher has to be teaching has to be student centered and not the teacher centered so teacher role is to only act as a guide as a mentor to create interest and inspire students for learning because education is not learning the fact but the training of the mind to think and fortunately at present i think teacher has access to many aids many multimedia is available that can be used at the click of a button which make learning more interesting and engaging so teaching learning process becomes more effective so social media is paving way for new age learning which is personalized and customized to suit the need of every learner so in this interconnected world professional networks and connections have become very important to one's success and future growth so to face all these challenges which i have talked about in this last uh, two three slide i think the education system must adapt to modern education system so what is that modern education system see you can see from the visual what was that earlier uh, uh, traditional education versus the modern education system so teacher education is teacher centered in the traditional education system the learning objective is usually the transfer of the knowledge what the teacher knows transfer the knowledge to the students knowledge or information or skills from the teacher to the students the teacher more or less controls the material to be learned by the students and the pace of learning also while presenting the course content to the students everything was dependent on the teacher the purpose of learning is only to acquire and memorize that knowledge or learn the skill so traditional education methods rely heavily on the replication based assessment in the practical or the uh, theory exams as well whatever you have learnt in the class usko jitna acche se humne usko reproduce kar diya in our theory paper i think the student will be getting better score so we all i think have been educated in this uh, teacher centric classroom a system where the uh, teacher is up front and the students are um, uh, seated in nice neat rows uh, listening to the lecture and uh, maybe the very fast taking the notes so this system has been and to some extent still forms and the core of our education system but institutions have relied on it for uh, i think decades together and have only recently undergone Uh, major changes especially i think after that uh, uh, pandemic when we had no choice uh, but to offer only on the uh, online uh, uh, teaching so in the modern education system is the learner centered means the students learn best not only by receiving the knowledge but also by interpreting it learning through discovery while also setting the pace of their own learning teachers only coach and mentor the students to facilitate learning designing experiences through which students acquire new knowledge and develop new skills so modern education involves interactive methods for effective learning it significantly emphasizes more on the use of technology it focuses more on the students needs rather than assuming that all students are at the same level of understanding because every individual has a different style of learning and when this with the use of this media i think this is possible that we can provide uh, the content to the student uh, as per their uh, style of learning so it is activity based comprising of uh, questioning explaining demonstration and collaboration techniques this form of education teaches imaginative creative thinking and visualization so today online education has become an essential part of the learning process and pedagogy offering an immense scope of learning anything anytime and anywhere the internet has become a vast pool of knowledge 
providing opportunities to people of all ages to refine their skills and expand their expertise in different fields of study. So now education in the 21st century has changed the fundamental shift in the way we communicate now no more um, chalk and talk way of uh, uh, communication social media tools are rapidly changing the communication landscape their emergence has impacted significantly how students learn and the way teachers teach so living in this 21st century technology has become an integral part of our everyday lives it has brought about uh, the complete overhauling of our world and more importantly of our education system in the nutshell education in the 21st century should be reimagined redefined redesigned and reinvented so educational institutions have realized the capability and the potential of social media technologies to enhance the overall teaching learning process it not only provides students access to useful information, but also connects them with the other learning groups and other educational systems that make their overall learning process more interesting and engaging. See, another uh, important thing that why we should use the social media in this just to be on the lighter side, I can think you can see the child is asking, uh, hey, dad, did you hear the news? That says, no, I haven't seen CNN yet yesterday. And the child says, what is CNN? So I think uh, they cannot uh, imagine their life uh, without uh, internet. And then say, dad, how did everyone email each other before the internet was around? They can't even imagine ki how earlier the people were communicating with uh, each other. They do not know about uh, all that, what is that postal process and uh, all those things. So in the nutshell, I can say that they cannot imagine their life without internet. So why not to use its potential in our teaching learning system when our students are so much familiar with these kind of technologies? So friends, with the uh, today is present is the net generation. They use the latest in the technology and they are highly motivated to do that. They have wide range of interest, which they can meet with the use of social media. They use computers in their work and their uh, uh, hobbies also. So with the use of, uh, because with the use of internet, you can get instant and updated information at the click of a button and that too in a small gadget in your hand. So internet is used for, uh, business, earning online, education, e-banking, information about uh, nearby outlets, maybe it is the booking of uh, tickets, maybe it is for travel or you have to watch a movie. I mean, the health sector, I think now it has the uh, large presence. Um, you have to make the hospital appointment or you have to order uh, maybe medicines, online shopping, sharing information on WhatsApp groups, etc., etc., and that too within no time name any area i think information is there so all age groups of people maybe it is two years of age using internet maybe in the form of online gaming or maybe the short videos of their uh, nursery rhymes to the 75 years of the age maybe it is uh, the rickshaw puller or to the ceo of an uh, organization i think people are using internet so what makes our Gen Y people, the present people generation is different. The way they are consuming media, they are spending more time with the internet than TV and also use the internet as the hub of their media activity. It is the centerpiece of their life. It is how they communicate with each other and their world. And Presently, we are no longer limited to being consumers of information. We are now collaborators. We are now producers of information. Every person has the ability to contribute ideas and experiences to the larger body of knowledge that is the internet. And as per the, I think uh, I'm not uh, saying it is only the research has proved that 90% of the students use social networks for one or the 
other purpose so now learning is changing today students of almost any age i think are far ahead of the teachers in terms of computer literacy they prefer to access the subject information on the internet where abundant easily accessible and i think more up to date information is available so next coming to what social media tools do you use take a minute and think how much uh, what to talk about students uh, for ourselves also how much we are connected to the outer world in our daily life through this internet maybe it's youtube facebook or whatsapp or uh, instagram i think we all start our day and end our day with the mobile phones using various apps so what type of social media is presently being used by you in your daily life or maybe in your uh, teaching classroom teaching at present what is the status yes please any one of you so i think we all are using youtube facebook whatsapp instagram maybe for our uh, uh, personal uh, this use or maybe for our uh, entertainment or maybe to uh, get some information uh, out of that but how much you are using in our uh, uh, teaching education system any type of social media which you are using in your classroom teaching so let me know at least what is the present status before i go further just take a minute think yes please good morning ma'am yes please क्या क्या यूज कर रहे हैं हम डेली अपने पर्सनल उसके लिए और उसमें से हम कितना टीचिंग के लिए कितना की यूज कर पा रहे हैं शोइंग द इनोवेशन व्हिच इज टेकिंग प्लेस अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड वी आर शोइंग देम लिंक्डइन वीडियोस मैम इन व्हिच वी सी न्यू न्यू थिंग्स व्हाट पीपल आर डिवाइसिंग डे बाय डे ओके विद द हेल्प ऑफ दैट देयर स्टूडेंट्स आर एबल टू नो की व्हाट पीपल आर थिंकिंग हाउ दे आर मेकिंग व्हाट दे आर डिजाइनिंग हां हां बहुत स्टफ तो जनरली वी आर यूजिंग लिंक्डइन ओनली मैम ओके What about others? Please, please respond. I think you all use karte hain, Facebook bhi karte hain, Instagram bhi karte hain. Is it that only you are using for yourself, or you are using it your, uh, for the classroom teaching also, or not at all? Maybe that's that's fine only. I think I just wanted to have your response that to what extent we are using uh, at present. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, please, Mr. Ma'am, uh, um, we are using YouTube also uh, mm -hmm. for uh, with help of videos we can explain uh, better in better way to students. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Google Meet for online classes. Mm hmm. Okay, Google Meet. Yes, please. Anybody else? so if i will give you some of the data before you see how much is there the word of networking here's a quick look at the user statistics of a few social media platforms which only prove the growing popularity of these websites we have talked about only uh, one or two maybe somebody said youtube videos or maybe we are using uh, uh, google meet i think then that case there is a, a way far we have to go Uh, in this uh, field because the growth of social media over past few years has changed the ways in which the internet is experienced by most end users i think india is the largest online country after china with about uh, 70 crores internet users you can see the statistics before you the facebook is being used by how much billion of people and youtube i think people watch billion of video clips on youtube daily every hour users upload video content every day more than 90% of the college students visit a social networking site for one purpose or the other so people have woven these networks into their daily routine using facebook twitter linkedin i think which is very important online gaming environments 
and other tools. So using of social media is not only limited to professionals or elders, but also it is being widely used in the educational sectors by the students as social media provides any data you want very easily and quickly within a fraction of seconds. I think this data, the statistics uh, in front of you shows that how much is the potential for the use of social media because when we are using these things in our daily life, but we are not aware of that, how we can use these in our classroom. So next coming to social media in the classroom, what are the most effective ways teachers can use social media in their lecture halls and the classrooms? So I have uh, listed down only those uh, uh, important and the popular ones amongst the teachers and the students. The number one is the Google Docs. It is very popular technology with the teachers and students. Students and teachers can use these tools to collaborate on assignments, projects, newsletters, among other things. It allows more than one person to work on a particular document at the same time. Google Docs can promote the teamwork and group-based learning. Another important is the Facebook. I think everyone is the, uh, familiar with this. Now, as Katena, now is the generation gap. Teacher is still on the book, but students ask the teacher to come on the Facebook. Facebook can be the perfect social media platform to incorporate into the classrooms. I think stick to something everyone already knows and using. So have students follow the class Facebook page and the teacher can use it to post class updates, share homework assignments, and also encourage discussions on the Facebook. Teachers can also create Facebook groups for each of their classes, both public or private, and stream Facebook live lectures, post discussion questions, assign homework, and also make class announcements. It creates a space for the students to ask and answer the questions also. When students uh, get home and begin working on their homework, they can post a question to the group so as to get it answered by the group member immediately. Students can share online resources related to coursework. Teachers can also facilitate online discussions about the course material on this page. It is also ideal for teachers uh, uh, using flipped classrooms where you give all of the material to the students and uh, uh, they can uh, go through that material at their places and then in the next uh, class they come prepare with that material and can have only discussion in the class. So post videos, photos, documents and other resources on the group's wall and students can access before class or when they work on their assignments. Twitter. Twitter also offers a quick way to post class and announcements and reminders as well as real-time information on the class field trips. It also helps classes track information on any topic. Uh, for example, for a class discussing on a current event or a topic on a career, Twitter can provide up-to-date information, eliminating the need for extensive research. Many organizations offer Twitter chat sessions with which students can interact. Twitter can be um, great as a discussion board also or a message board for class. Teachers can create a single Twitter handle per class and reuse it every year, or they can create a new handle each academic year. So the 280 character limit also make the students think critically on communicating concisely and effectively which is a very beneficial skill to develop when they have to present their ideas in such small words. <clears throat> so teacher can use Twitter to post reminders for the assignments, due dates, or uh, uh, sometimes can share also inspirational quotes and helpful links also to uh, practice quizzes or other resources. Teacher can also create discussions and Twitter chats surrounding a specific hashtag that they create for the class. Another important encourage students to write on the blogs. It will certainly improve their writing skills. So instead of traditional writing projects, blogs create opportunities for the students to write and display their writings on a large scale. 
students can share what they know with the world by hosting blogs and inviting uh, other classrooms to see what they have learned. So student can reflect on what they have learned through the blogs. You can create a class blog also for the uh, discussions. And uh, writing the blog post gives students another outlet for the digital content that they can uh, uh, easily link back to the class social channels. There are many different platforms available, such as uh, WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, Blogger, Tumblr, or Medium, where teachers can create a class blog. Students can create their own user accounts to make discussion posts or add comments on the class prompts. So the course labels and any assignments, updates, and resources can be shared on a blog as a central location as well. You can assign the blog post as the essays also. Having students create uh, in their own blog for essays for uh, short-term writing is another strategy for combining the social media and learning. Blogs as a semester or year-long assignment can improve students' short-term uh, writing and critical thinking. So don't feel limited to just an English or maybe the uh, writing essays. This use of social media and education can be transferred across all the subjects. Next is the Pinterest. Create a class specific Pinterest board. Instructors can create Pinterest boards for each of their classes and save pins that are relevant to the lessons. So Pinterest is a great social media platform for teachers to use to prepare and organize resources, lesson plans, and worksheets for their classes in one place, create boards according to the class or maybe according to the subject, and create subtopic boards for weekly units for uh, all the worksheets. So Pinterest can also be useful for students to curate a digital bibliography for research projects, for research papers, or maybe the group assignments. So students can pin websites books or videos to a board on a single topic and refer back to it when it is the time to write. Another <clears throat> familiar uh, platform with you is the Instagram. It is said that no picture is worth 1000 words. So Instagram can showcase student work by offering a place to feature student hard work or even interesting details about the students. So you can use Instagram for the photo essays. In a visual heavy class, students can use Instagram to present a series of uh, photos or um, graphics in a visual appealing manner. Instagram allows students to practice digital storytelling in ways that other social media platforms may not offer. So students can create class specific Instagram accounts and may delete them after the course is over if they so choose. YouTube. YouTube is also an excellent option of flipping classroom in that students can watch lectures and resources before entering the classroom. Students can uh, create and post videos for others to view rather than uh, do in class uh, oral presentations. Again, like blogging, since the material will be seen by a wider audience, students will be more apt to do their very best in creating a video and they will enjoy being to express their creativity as they connect more deeply with the post material. WhatsApp groups. I think this is very common. Many uh, institutions and teachers have uh, created all these WhatsApp groups. <clears throat> they are created for uh, sharing information about the class assignments or maybe the other institutional events. So I think it is the most commonly used by each one of us. And LinkedIn. I think social media is also a medium where students can establish beneficial connections for their careers, maybe with the employers the, on this uh, uh, LinkedIn. These days, it is, I think, one of the important platform for networking and social credibility, where you can enhance your uh, uh, visibility. Students can create their profile. It will certainly help them in getting the employment. Teachers can find experts in their uh, uh, subject areas uh, through this uh, LinkedIn. Slide share, I think this is also all of you might be familiar. Students can also make PowerPoint presentations of their subjects and can share on this platform. In addition, there are other platforms also like Quora, ResearchGate, which provide online tutorials to help the students. So I think this is some of the popular uh, social media, which uh, at present also teachers are uh, using. And uh, we should also 
uh, explore the possibility of uh, integrating this uh, different platforms in our classroom instruction. So as I said, social media has a lot to offer to educational community. Here are uh, some of the direct benefits of uh, social media usage for the uh, educational community. The most important is social media is as used as the communication channels. I think uh, many studies have shown that this successful running of any learning experience depends on many things, one of which being the effective communication between teachers and their students. If no proper communication between the teacher and student is available, I think both teaching and learning will become difficult. So the more connected the teachers are to their students, I think more likely they are able to help students learn quickly and at a high level. So these web-based uh, uh, platforms could actually be used to enhance the communication between the different actors of the educational system, maybe the student, faculty, or uh, maybe the other staff also. So Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, for instance, can serve as back channels for communication among the students and also between the teachers and the students within or maybe beyond the classrooms. So teachers can answer the student questions via a Facebook page or a Twitter feed. You can post homework assignments, as I said, and different lesson plans on this to uh, keep connecting with the students even after the classroom. So it is a very important communication channel with which the teachers can help the students learning better. So social media can improve communication, not only between the student and teacher, as I said, but also amongst the students. The letters, the students can use social networks to talk to each other about the upcoming assignments or the tests. They can get details from their classmates about that materials will be, which will be covered on a test or a particular assignments. The second important benefit is the social media as the engagement tool. So social media tools are also the effective ways to increase the uh, student engagement between the between each other. As I said, a student who hardly ever participates in the class may get actively engaged in co-constructing his learning experiences with his teacher, collaborating with his fellow colleagues, and may feel more comfortable to express himself or to share his resources and ideas on the Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. So using tools such as uh, Google Apps would enable students to have access to valuable learning resources regardless of the time and space. And moreover, I think uh, given that many students often complain of uh, getting uh, bored in the class, the dynamic and the participatory nature of uh, Many social media resources, I think, could be used to engage or uh, re-engage the board or the shy students also. So collaborative and participatory tools like uh, wikis, blogs, Google Docs, I think that can uh, encourage students to become active participants or even co-producers rather than the passive consumers of the content. So social media tools could be used to design uh, learning activities that are both social and interactive. For example, discussion, debate, group projects. So this would enable students to learn from each other and also interact with each other and the other people beyond the institute walls also. So using technology to accommodate students, different learning style is not new for all of us. The strength of social media application is that they offer variety of tools that learners can mix and match to best suit their individual learning styles and also increase their academic success. So social media as a collaborative platforms. See another vital benefit of the uh, social media is that they foster collaboration. Collaboration means working together jointly, intellectually, and socially to achieve co common goals. So within an online learning community, collaboration refers to any instructional method in which uh, students work together in groups towards a 
common goal as such collaborative learning can be viewed as a encompassing of uh, all group based instructional methods including cooperative learning so the core content of the element of the collaborative learning is that emphasis is on the student interactions rather than on learning as the independent activity so given the importance of collaboration in the learning process i think a great number of social media tools serve as the platform for learners to gather and share information and uh, other resources from both internal as well as the external collaboration because on social media students exchange lot of information so why not use uh, this platform to encourage collaborative learning social networking uh, makes students more peer based young people are more motivated to learn from the uh, from their peers online they interact and receive feedback from uh, one another they also motivated to learn from each other rather than from the adults so teacher and adults are no longer the only source of uh, knowledge for them even the social learning theory also says that the students learn best when they learn from each other so several studies have found that when students study together they earn higher grades they are more engaged and they are more motivated so in fact several institutions i think uh, globally are encouraging students uh, uh, to go for international partnerships using social media for taking up some project assignments because by doing this they get engaged with each other and learn how to manage the projects and coordinate with the teams sitting globally along with the cross cultural sensitivities another important benefit is the any time connectivity i think any time connectivity has become possible due to the arrival of various social media websites you can post your question wait for few hours to get a solution to your queries because there is often someone to uh, reply from the international community as the geographical factors do not restrict most of the social networking sites so sometimes it is uh, uh, difficult to address the queries of student during the classroom session but this makes it further difficult for students to clear their doubts so how our teachers can take advantage of uh, social media technology to extend teaching uh, hours beyond the classroom they can set up as i said facebook live sessions or twitter discussions to cover the unclear doubts of their students so as a matter of fact teachers can allocate dedicated time slots for online discussions to answer uh, any question or to uh, work with the students so through facebook sessions faculty can connect with large audiences at one go which otherwise is not possible in one class helps to foster research social media offers collaborative opportunities to foster the research initiatives it is one of the best platforms to extract the secondary data you can conduct survey pools to gather sampling and find out opinions of uh, uh, general people and other experts so next coming to another uh, benefit of the social media that uh, take the advantage of blogs to create the virtual library setting up a personal blog or website gives teachers a lot of freedom to build intellectual credibility they can upload their academic work and other important lectures and videos that will allow students to take relevant inputs as the reference material for their studies connecting with the experts on various topics via social media i think the great thing about using social media is that you can come to know easily who are the experts in a particular field or a particular subject so when you start following these experts you learn more and gain useful content from them which will help you to provide latest knowledge to the students social media has the ability to broaden your perspective on various subjects and gives you the latest instant content that is new you have the opportunity of engaging experts to get answers on the topics that you may need help students can get useful content by following these experts online social media as the marketing tool for institutions as well as for the educators for the educational institutions i think these days social media is a great marketing tool to reach out to the students academic institutions are communicating with students via youtube and facebook so these channels can be used to communicate campus news make announcements and provide students with the uh, useful information this way this new media has led also the educational professionals to build a strong marketing strategy to increase their brand awareness 
so through blogging slide share teachers are establishing themselves as experts in particular fields and the subjects this empowers institutions to establish its brand equity in the academic world and finally i think it is the cost cost effective communication social media is an excellent and free medium for the end user many teaching learning platforms are available which are providing their services free of course so these are the benefits of the social media for the teachers and the students so finally coming to that in a world of social media as it seems that educators are more important than ever but uh, sometimes we feel that with the use of social media the importance of the teacher is becoming uh, less it seems as if the learners actively take responsibility and regulate own collaborative learning meaning that teacher is no longer in uh, uh, full control but it is not like that i think the teacher acts as a secondary guide as a facilitator and the students are encouraged to take active control this allows them to achieve their learning goals and coordinate the process by agreeing on those rules and the deadlines students actively plan their activities and assume different roles within a group instead of simply concentrating on learning the content as such every member of the group may be seen both as a learner and a tutor the uh, teacher only has to act as the uh, facilitator to carry out those activities so i think uh, this is the way we were earlier using uh, maybe few of the technologies maybe the powerpoint presentations or maybe some of the uh, print and digital resources and few curriculum documents in our uh, uh, teaching uh, learning system but now i think uh, this is the way we are there is a complete transformation of a chalk and talk teacher to a digital teacher now the networked teacher but yes this looks a little overwhelming but it really does not take uh, too long to do some investigation and to figure out that what pieces of this uh, picture are important to you in your professional life and what can be used in your uh, uh, traditional and uh, the classrooms to make it virtual classrooms so most of these tools are very easy and can be mastered with maybe little or no help and use of these tools will give your students some new and exciting ways to demonstrate their learning and at the same time can provide alternatives or matching activities with their learning styles so finally coming to what changes i think the key part is to be thinking about those pedagogical aspects and to start creating opportunities for students to use those tools in their learning so what changes must we make in our teaching as it becomes easier to bring primary resources to our students how do we need to rethink our ideas of literacy when we must prepare our students to become not only readers and writers but also editors and collaborators and publishers as well so what needs to change about our curriculum when our students have the ability to reach far beyond our classrooms walls how can we use uh, can as learners begin to take advantage of the opportunities these tools present so we may understand more clearly in the pedagogies of using them in the classrooms so these four questions i give it to you i have talked about what are the medias which are presently being used by the teachers and uh, which have the uh, potential to improve your teaching learning uh, process and uh, also have talked about uh, the benefits of using that social media in our teaching learning system and as a teacher i think only you have to uh, give a little thought to these questions to integrate those aspects in your teaching